Hey everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am going to do a demo today on uh, portrait gesture and uh, value study. Uh, so this will focus on um, gesture, construction, and how I approach uh, shading and, and really kind of defining the planes uh, of the female face. Um, I am also wanting to apologize for missing last week. I know I said I'd produce a video a week, so this is me trying to redeem myself. Uh, hopefully later this week I'll, I'll get a second video out to make up for, for last week's absence. I was on vacation, uh, so hopefully you can forgive me for that. Um, anyway, let's let's dive into this and, and get started. Um, so the, the first thing the first thing that I like to do is start off with a just a rough gesture. Where I'm blocking in just the main the main shapes. You can see here I'm just blocking in the massive cranium. And this is more or less the, the Andrew Luma's approach. I'm going to find that midline uh, for the, the brow. And then just below that we have the, the eye line. We can see that it's, it's angled. It's angled down. So you want to make sure you get that tilt right of the eye line. That, that'll definitely help out a lot to establish that early on in your in your drawing. And uh, here I'm going to get that midline, which uh, shows me uh, essentially where the nose, the mouth, and the eyes will line up with each other. So if I drew it over here on the photo, you can see it'd be kind of right there going over the midline of the lips, the nose, and in between the eyebrows. Um, and then I'm going to do a rough gestural line to kind of show me where this uh, cheekbone edge would be. Um, I'm going to block in a shape for the ear. And when, I, when I'm doing gestures, uh, I, I really like to start off with finding the gesture of the neck muscles, the sternocleidomastoids. It's kind of easy to see those, those landmarks and um, being able to establish where they, they feed into the pit of the neck, which is, you know, this, this is the pit of the neck right there. Uh, below is the sternum, and then you know you have the clavicles that flank the top of the sternum. That's that forms the pit of the neck. And I, I'm going to use some simple straights just to block in kind of the basic shape or silhouette of the of the hair. You can see that top is kind of cropped off. So I'm just trying to find those those angle changes. And then trying to match those angles with um, other points of the portrait, so I know they're in relationship, in proper relationship to one another. And here I can find the hairline. Notice I, all of my lines at this point are, are pretty soft, and I'm doing that so if I make any, if I need to make adjustments, which it looks like I'm going to have to make some here, 
It looks like the ear is actually further back. So I'm going to make that change now. And it's okay to make, uh, make corrections, especially early on. Again, that's why it's helpful to start off with uh, these light lines. I'm just going to do a, like a light wash of value, kind of block in the overall shape of the hair. And here I'm just finding that angle change of the jawline. Um, all right, so I think that's a pretty good, pretty good place to start. We have that, that T line showing the eye line and the uh, alignment of the mouth, nose, and eyes. And then we have a, a rough gesture of the, the neck showing how the head attaches to the torso. And here I'm just going to do a rough line to show the shoulder line. So yeah, I think uh, I think we're ready to start adding more of those secondary shapes. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and save it just to make sure we don't lose this. Um, the hotkey for saving on Photoshop is Control S, and I I recommend you do that often. Um, it's it's so frustrating when you you get a lot of work done and you're liking what you've done and then all of a sudden your Photoshop crashes or your computer crashes and then you lose all of that work. Um, so I, I've learned the hard way uh, from that happening to me many times. So I, uh, I, I've made it a habit now to save constantly uh, throughout any project that I'm doing uh, with Photoshop. Um, Now that we've saved it, we can move on. Um, it's really helpful to establish that that midline, um, that vertical midline on the face, so you kind of know where to place uh, that um, kind of keystone shape that exists in between the brows, in between the eyes. Um, this is a, a very good landmark to establish early on in your gesture because it'll help you tremendously with getting the spacing right on the eyes. So from there I can kind of establish the plane of the, the nasal bone and then I can find where the, kind of the bulbous part of the nose is and uh, kind of roughly place where the, the corners of the nose will be, the wings. Um, again, so you can see this is all construction. This is all preliminary work, so everything's very soft. Again, with the intent that uh, I, if I need to make corrections, uh, it'll be easier to do so. I can go over it with a darker line if I need to course correct. Um, but one trick I like to do when I'm doing these portraits um, is I, I, I like to do um, a connection line between the, the tear duct of the eye and um, the side of the, uh, the, the wing of the nose. Uh, usually those, those line up for the most part. Um, obviously this is going to be angled back a little bit um, since this is more of a three-quarter view. Um, it's nice to establish where those tear ducts would be. So from there, now that I've done that, I can kind of, with more confidence, let's get a gesture or block in of, of the eye shape. Uh, 
one thing I like to do just to make sure they're kind of lining up. Uh, again, this is construction. Um, I, I'm going to go over it uh, again and clean it up. Um, but when I'm, I'm blocking in those eye, those eye shapes, I do kind of a curved line to follow the uh, gesture line of the, the eyelids, the upper eyelids. And then I do a straight line establishing the alignment of the eyes kind of cutting through the middle. And, and that like nice uh, straight against a curve uh, creates a nice sense of uh, um, of structure and uh, solidness. So, yeah, you can see that that that's it's feeling pretty good. Um, again, we're gonna have to go in. So, like, we could even go in right now and start erasing some of those lines, and and that's really important to do, uh, especially with the female. Um, you want to make sure you're um, omitting as many details as possible uh, when you're doing a feminine face. So any uh, extra noise detail will kind of distract from the, um, the the beauty of the face, and and more than anything with the with the female, you just want the attention to be a hundred percent. 100% on the eyes. Um, so anything that distracts from the eyes, your your uh, your eyes going to uh, to that focal point, you want to um, diminish or omit. Uh, here I'm just blocking in a gesture of the, the lips. Um, we can see the right corner of the mouth. And again, another alignment trick is the corner of the mouth, if you uh, draw up a vertical line, um, will usually line up with, uh, with the pupil of, of the eye. And so we can't quite see the corner of the mouth on this side. Uh, it's kind of hidden behind that, um, the the lip shape there. But we can go ahead and kind of. So we want to go back and forth between those two pupil shapes. Just make sure they're more or less kind of matching each other. Um, again, that is something we can correct and make more precise later in the drawing. Uh, we want to make sure that um, the, the gesture line for the lips, the base of the nose, and the eyes, and the base of the chin um, all line up. Like they should all, for the most part, be parallel to each other, and and the hairline as well. Um, you know, if not, if that's like a little curved up, it's you know it's gonna look it's gonna look off. So you want to make sure you know all those lines, uh, all those shapes are lined up. All right, I'm going to save again. All right, we're going to move on to the other eye now.
and to find that upper eyelid. So we'll we'll go back in with uh, with value and we can get into the shading. We can refine refine these shapes and then block in that lower eyelid. So I'm going to start erasing out some of these construction lines. I'm going to leave that line for the, the temporal line for now. But you can see how how much of a difference it makes once you clean up some of those construction lines. Um, pulling out or zooming out, I can see. But I need to make this right the screen right pupil bigger. Just adding in those highlights right now. Um, I'll have to go in and clean them up more. So one thing I'm noticing is I think the screen right eye is actually needing to be adjusted. I'm going to have to pull that in because I've noticed that if I follow a straight line from the side of the nose and go straight up, that actually feeds into that shape right there, that line that feeds into the top of the upper eyelid. So I just use the transform tools. I, I selected that right eye and then I just pulled it over. Um, so occasionally you may have to have to make those corrections. start blocking in the value of the hair. This to help frame the face. You can see just how helpful it is to have that underlying construction to work on top of.
I'm just going in and defining those secondary shapes of the screen left cheek. But when I say a uh, screen left, um, I'm referring to you know that side of her face, and then screen right's that side. But in reality, like her left, her left side would actually be this side, and then her right side would actually be that side according to her and her orientation so that's why I try to uh, clarify that The, the value of the upper lip, which you can see is considerably darker than the lower lip since it's not catching as much light. Darken the hair, just kind of blocking in that value. Um, when you're painting or drawing hair, I think it's, it's very helpful to try to simplify the shapes into hair clumps instead of trying to like delineate and sketch out every individual strand of hair. Um, try to see it as a set of value shapes and hair clumps and focus more on the silhouette as well. Roughly block in her shoulder. So we're we're getting closer. Not not really a likeness just yet. See that this chin is kind of a a soft edge that tucks in underneath the jawline. So we just kind of soften that. And her chin is not not very big. It's a little dainty bit, little dainty chin. So, I think we have a decent 
block in here, but again, I can see that this eye is way too far right. Um, so again, I'm going to move it closer. And that looks... I think that's more in the ballpark right there. Um, at this point, see, I'm going to just do a, a rough wash. Um, it's not like a mid-tone, half-tone wash, and then I can pull out the the highlights from there. I'm going to start using my my blender brush so I can start smoothing out some of these gradients. You can see this upper eyelid is definitely catching more uh, catching more light and same with the meaty part of the eyebrow just below where the the hair is there's a little bit of, of a highlight there
and start blocking in those eyelashes. So I think we're doing pretty good. I'm going to grab the blender brush and, oops, grab the paint bucket on accident. Um, so I'm going to smooth out some of the texture or lines that I threw in the hair. Nice to have, you know, some areas where the edges get kind of lost. The, the filtrum above the lips and gonna have to go in and soften that a bit so it's not grabbing too much attention. save again okay let's work on doing the final pass on this
So now I'm trying to go in and get some of those highlights. Try to define some of those planes on the nose a little better. So the tip of the nose is more of a uh, kind of a ball shape. So that main highlight is going to be. Again, the plane on that ball that's more pip perpendicular to the light source. See on the lips, there's a nice highlight down there. Uh, for those of you who are wondering, uh, the, the main brush I've been using on this, um, this portrait has been my soft sketch brush. Um, I, I include this as part of my Gumroad tutorials that I sell on, uh, well, on Gumroad, obviously. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of people ask me on Instagram and on YouTube. Um, where they can find that brush and now you know Um, you can see the ear is definitely catching 
some strong highlights as well. So I'm going to try to indicate those. Um, zooming out, that looks like we need to soften that cheekbone on the screen right, and then we need to add a little more lighting there too. So, yeah, sometimes it, it's really helpful to just kind of zoom out. You can kind of see easier what's not quite where it needs to be. So I can go in there and make those adjustments right now. Yeah, that's feeling better. And I'm going to zoom out. Yeah, we're, we're getting closer. Um, we're not quite hitting the, the likeness 100%, but that's okay. This is more of a value um, study than it is a likeness study. See, there's a part of that chin that's catching a little more light. Kind of the ball of the chin. Save again real quick. OK. 
Okay, so hopefully this is going to be closer to the final pass. So I'm going to add a little more texture to some of these hair clumps. background layer with some rough value. That'll kind of help get those uh, highlights to pop a little more. And here I'm just cleaning up the, the frame, the, the edges of the canvas. Um, if you're wondering how I'm getting these really straight lines, I'm just using um, a brush, but then when um, I make the mark, I hold down shift, and then I just drag it over to the right, and it gives me a nice, clean, straight line. And you can do that with vertical lines as well. See? clean up. There's a, a nice penumbra effect going on with this cash shadow or it gets softer the further further away the cash shadow is um, from that jaw. So I'm just using my blender brush. To soften that. I'm going to soften the edges on the screen left cheek just so it's not grabbing too much tension. Um, I think we're about done here. I I could keep going um, and trying to push it further and further towards getting a a likeness, but again, I I just wanted to focus more on um, the initial gesture, uh, the initial construction, and uh, the shading, the value. So. I, I really hope um, you found this helpful and as I said before I'm, I'm gonna keep trying to get at least one of these videos out a week um, the next tutorial that I'm working on is, is gonna be focusing on the anatomy of, of the limbs we'll start off with the arms and then the legs and uh, and then I am still working on that character design um, tutorial as well. That one is definitely more 
or time intensive, so. Just blocking in the highlights and, and those hair shapes. some of those negative shapes of the hair blocked back uh, blocked back in Um, as I'm wrapping this up, I'm just looking for little places to kind of get some contrast in the in the edges. Uh, so your eye has can travel more easily throughout the composition. Checking the alignments. Ooh, and then I need to add those like little highlights that those um, eyelashes are catching. Don't want to make them too strong. You can see some of those lower eyelashes are catching too. I'm going to clean up the 
outline of this screen left cheek. Um, those lower eyelids are catching a little bit of light as well. Do the finishing few touches here. Just clean up this jaw. Okay, I am going to add just a little dark accent right there on that eye. Maybe not quite as strong, just a little bit.
Okay, well, I, I think that's it. Cleaning up this upper eyelid. All right, there we have it. Um, so there's one last thing that I just noticed that I want to fix uh, before we wrap up this uh, this YouTube video. Um, I did notice that the right eye uh, needs to kind of droop down more in the middle, uh, similar to the left eye. Um, almost looks like her left eye is like slightly closing, like she's got a little twitch, which is not what's actually happening. So try to fix that real quick. So I'm going to match up the base of that curve. Also, um, so with the, with the pupil, and this is something I should have done earlier, uh, when the light is coming that direction and you have the highlight right there. That means the light's coming in and then it's going to actually uh, get caught on this side. So there's going to be more light here. And then this is going to be darker and have kind of a gradient from dark to light moving in that direction. So we're going to fix that. Try to do a better job at getting those highlights in the tear duct.
And one of the more difficult things is really getting the ellipse of the the pupil and the iris correct, at least in the right perspective. I'm going to go over here and spend a little more time doing the same. I'm just going to clean up this upper eye a little bit. Maybe add just a few of these eyelashes. hard to get to a point where you, the further along you get the more you see the the little smaller flaws I think I think that is it for for today. Again, I I, I could probably spend another few hours on this, but this would be a very very long video, so I'm gonna stop. After I do this. Okay, now I'm going to stop. Okay, now I'm just going to do the final crop. Take off a little more on the right side. Try to center it. Oh, um, yeah, one last hotkey that I can teach you is when you um, hit C on your keyboard, that pulls up your cropping tool. And then you're good to go. 
All right, here we have the final product. Uh, again, the, the aim was not really to get uh, likeness on this one. It was mostly to go through my process of uh, construction, gesture, and shading, and kind of how to find and refine those planes on the face. Uh, so I, I hope you were able to glean something from um, watching the video and listening to uh, the commentary. Uh, let me know if you prefer this format uh, where it's more freestyle, where I'm uh, everything is real time, the commentary, the, um, the drawing, the painting, all of it. Uh, I know there's a lot of uh, breaks and lulls in my dialogue, or I should say in my monologue. I apologize for that, but it, it is difficult to draw, paint, think, and, uh, and uh, teach or, or make commentary at the same time. But I, I hope that as I do this more and more, I will improve and keep getting better at it. Um, but I would love to hear uh, your feedback and uh, know if this is something you want me to keep doing. And if so, I'll, I'll keep producing these videos each week and uh, try to get more content out there. Um, uh, just just for your information, I, I am working on the next Gumroad tutorials that will be focusing on the anatomy of the arms, of the limbs, uh, starting with the arms and then going into the legs. And I, I'm also working on that character design uh, tutorial, which I'm hoping to get out um, uh, within the next month. Um, and uh, as another reminder as well, uh, my uh, Halloween holiday sale is, is still ongoing. That will be uh, wrapping up on October 31st, the day of Halloween. So that's 20% off uh, all of my existing tutorials. So uh, again, hopefully that's helpful for those who uh, couldn't quite afford it before and um, we're asking for that for that discount. So. Um, Again, I, I want to thank all of you for tuning in today and for making it to the end of this video. All of your support means means a lot to me. It keeps me going with producing more content. I'll do my best to continue to create more content to improve on the quantity and quality. And please let me know in the comments what you'd like to see more of. And as always, if you have feedback, I, I always love to hear it and I'll do my best to implement it. Uh, again, thank you, and I will see you next time. Bye.